Hey guys, welcome back to Artosis Cast. Uh, today we're going to be taking a look at two of the absolute best uh, non-regulars for ASL. So we have Motive in the top left, who I think a lot of people are putting down as like, this is the Protoss that is closest to making a big splash in the pro scene right now. He's been at the top of the ladder as far as Protoss goes pretty much non-stop. He won CNSL Season 7 over Scan. Uh, he hasn't been in ASL yet, but he is playing in everything, and he is in ridiculously fantastic shape. Like, really has, is becoming one of the strongest players in the world right now. Uh, his opponent down here is Speed. Speed has been in ASL a few times. Uh, not a regular yet. Uh, you might remember him from the previous season where he had a great opener against Snow, and then Snow killed him with one Reaver. Uh, that made the rounds on highlight reels. A lot of people enjoyed that game and Snow's dominance in it. But Speed is uh, absolutely an ASL level Terran player, and he plays a very different style than everyone else. He's a bit more aggressive, uh, which is fun to see with Terran, right? Like, it's not something that you see uh, too often from Terran players, where they actually get really, really aggressive, right? If you look at ASL level Terran players, like... Sharp is probably the most aggressive out of all of them. And, you know, he he has a huge range, right? So he's not he's not super-duper balls-the-wall aggressive, but he'll be more aggressive than most. Uh, you know, I guess you could mention Ample, although I think Speed's actually better than Ample. But Ample, you know, has been in a lot of Star Leagues, KSL, ASL, stuff like that. Um, and he's, he's pretty aggressive, but Speed's really aggressive as far as Terrans go. Uh, it's hard to liken him to someone of another race. Like, I wouldn't say he's like a Zealot. Like, Zealot's almost aggressive to just this completely different degree. It's like a ladder Zerg became pro, but... Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, anyways, I, I like I like speed games uh, very, very much. Just because he is going to play it differently and give you a different outlook on, on how these matchups can be played. So how will Motive go against that? Because Motive is like... Dude, I, I feel this, like, brimming excitement as the ASL quals come, you know? Uh, it's just, it's like, they're, they're going to be here before you know it. Um, and like all these players, like there's a lot of players that are practicing really hard right now to try to get in and it's a big deal for them. You know, it, it's, if ASL is really all about prestige. It's not about prize money. It doesn't have that good of prize money, but it's like, that is how you show that you're one of the best in the world and that you're deserving of like viewership for your stream, which is how everyone makes their living in Starcraft one now. So, like, I feel this this excitement for everyone, and I feel the excitement as they, they are practicing for this, and we're, <laughs> excuse me, seeing the activity on ladder. But there's going to be a lot of heartbreak. There's so few, there's so few slots, right? 24 people are going to qualify. There's four that get seeded in from the previous season. So only 24 qualifier slots, and there's players that you know, no matter what, will make it in. <laughs> you know? There's a certain level of player. That didn't make top four. That is just like, yeah, you know, there's players that every season they're going to be in. You know, Mini, Rush, Hero, Sulky. Well, I mean, a bunch of these guys are seated already, but you you get you get my drift, right? And then you got people that it's like, well, you're going to have to be a real badass to knock out Light, right? Like, Light's probably just going to make it no matter what. in Snow, right? And that type of thing. Anyways, uh, it is it is an exciting time. Now, this was an eBay block, which you don't see too often. Uh, you know, you only see it normally against Proxy Gate, but he throws down the eBay block and that slows him a little bit. So the command center versus uh, Nexus timing is exactly lined up and it wouldn't have been without that eBay block. Notice that uh, he has made the four Marines. He has a Vulture out in the map. The SCV gets picked. Pulls this Vulture to the side. He might dart back up and see if the Dragoon moved, but I don't think so. There's no reason for the Dragoon really to move. Uh, in the meantime, the four Marines kind of keep this back. As range finishes, he can actually kill this. Now, I have to show you something, okay? So speed here is throwing down an armory. One factory armory. This is not actually very popular right now. A lot of Terrans don't like this after, off a of factory expand. But look at this, okay? Citadel and Robo. Now, I didn't know he was going to make Robo. I saw the Citadel pop up up here. And I wanted to talk about bad DT rushes because I've talked about them a lot in Flash games where some of his builds I look at and it's like yes a very suboptimal DT rush would be very strong here against him if someone like 
motive wants to mix in weirdly timed stuff. Like a DT drop is, it's actually not a very popular build at the pro level, but very popular sub pro level. Ooh, a little trade there. Um, you know, that that's, that's kind of an interesting thing in and of itself. And look at this, he's doing like a marine vultures with mine push. What a weird play here. But look, he's trying to get the mines down and deny this base. And he's doing this off of no tanks and no defense. He doesn't have a bunker. He doesn't have mines at home. He's laying only offensive mines. He's attacking across the map with the Marines and Vultures. Anyways, a very strange, very different play here from speed. But yeah, what I wanted, what I was trying to get at is like, if there is, there is room for a player to come in and do things like heavier DT builds. Like you can't do it every game because if people know you're doing DT builds, it's easy to beat. But like, if someone's willing to come in and do builds like this, I think that there's like a spot in ASL for someone like that where you're getting a lot of wins where the current Terran greeds are not necessarily good against that, right? These more ladder-esque builds. They can be strong. Like, look at this. He's going DT drop into Reaver. Oh, dude, the scan. <laughs> the scan sees literally everything. Ebay gets started immediately. He'll bank up his scan so he can block the first DTs coming over. Hopefully. And he's going to have one scan to start. The DTs, if he does this just right, the DTs actually can do some damage here. He's going to have to, like, pick up. If he can save a DT, it's amazing. He's going to have to spread them as well. It's important to spread. There's going to have to be an insta-scan. Oh, dude, the Goliath was brilliant, actually. That was perfect. See, he forces a shuttle away. Now he'll scan. He'll get one. The other one's going to live, though. Okay, pulls that one away. But we're close enough to another scan. We're like six, seven seconds away. So he actually has enough here. And he did all this without a bunker, man. Oh, my God. This is, speed is so fun to watch. All right, he should just bring this down and clear that. In the meantime, motive is... Uh, you know, clearing those mines, getting ready for his base. Oh, he wasn't in position for that. Woo! Ah, oh, he made it. Oh, no! He got it just at the very last shot. <laughs> it was going right out of vision range. Uh, so that was actually a little bit sloppy. But yeah, this Sim City, <coughs> excuse me, not very conducive to catching a DT. Actually, probably, this is actually kind of a good learning moment. You should probably, against Protoss, put something here to block running behind. Because that that happens to Terrans, where, like, you try to scan and your units are in a bad position and the DT just gets out. And that can lose you the game sometimes. Okay. So from here, we have four gates, speed on the way. The DT drop didn't do well for motive. Speed on the way. Well, I guess so as well. He is moving out. But um, I'm talking these shuttle speed upgrade. What am I looking at? Dude. Speed really plays his own game. You can't accuse this guy of being a meta, meta follower at all. So this opener that he's done, this is an upgrade. It's turning into upgrade Terran, right? He did like no bunker, right? Quick comsat scanner and armory. And he did like Marines and vultures attacking up here to get mines into good positions. And he's on two factories, right? Going upgrade Terran and making a third command center on location off of two factories with only one add-on. And he's going second armory. Like, craziest greed ever. Now, it's going to work in this particular game because of what he's against. This is such a teched out play. There's almost no units for motive. It's just tech units. So, like, yeah, there's potential for him to do damage here as well, obviously. Right? Like, we see this is out of position for speed a little bit. He's running some vultures around, whatever. Those aren't really doing anything. The Reaver is actually having some real potential here. <gasps> Ooh, good thing that dudded. And this one's going to dud as well. He is making a wraith to help push this out. He's actually only got one of his armories going for the 2 ones, so that's a little bit painful. Okay, catches this DT, so that's something at least. The Reaver... Oh my god. Okay, that could have been a better shot, but it was still pretty good. Three health and he's got to get out. 
wild, wild. So not the best defense against that. You can see some of the reasons why no one really plays like this, but you know, speed can do what he wants. Uh, I was mentioning before that in this particular uh, point, it, it should work, right? Because a DT drop is super expensive. You don't have many units behind it. And then he went into Reaver with uh, shuttle speed. So it's like you just don't have a large standing army. So the two factory third base on location with upgrades is normally against most builds won't do anything, but he, you know, every game is different. And he took measurement of where this game was at and realized he could do it. He still did get punished a bit for sure. And now he's got a vulture drop coming off. See, he's got no units at home and he's still out here harassing. Dude, speed is someone to watch. This is just, this is a treat. So just gonna pick that up. Double Reaver coming down to block. Yeah, that's, I'm surprised he even flew in there. That's so obvious that he's gonna have Dragoons there. You may as well just like fly this somewhere, like sit it here, sit it here. You can think about it later. Like he's not gonna keep units around forever. He'll probably add cannons, but like at least you still have this and maybe it, it gets utilized later. Yeah, maybe he gets out, maybe he doesn't. <coughs> This vulture running down here, I think, is to just watch for Dragoons so that he has a line out. That's my guess on that. But it could be watching for, like, counterattacks coming through as well. It can serve multiple purposes. But, like, this wouldn't be an uncommon thing to do. Run this down so that you see, like, oh, are there Dragoons here waiting? Okay, maybe I can make a line down here and get the dropship out. All right, speed shuttle with Zealots going this way. Reavers going this way. Very, very weakened one. He might want to swap what's in those two. Some high value cargo for sure. Two ones still on the way here, adding more facts. So he's really getting that factory count up. 53 SCVs only, so he's not really up to where he wants to be as far as that worker count goes. And here come the shuttles, but a Wraith is kind of waiting here. Oh my gosh, does he actually see that? I don't think he does. I think he happened to pull this back just as they were coming in, unfortunately. All right, so good flyby there. The uh, high health zealot shuttle actually tanks all the shots for this reaver shuttle come in. Oh, he loses the shuttle. That makes it so much easier to clear. But he does actually have a wraith as well, which could have helped against that. Reavers just microing as best they can in this tough situation, trying to kite a little bit, trying to get a few good shots. Hey, actually excellent shots. And he's going to kill that tank as well. Oh, or well, he actually draws the shot to the zealot. So that's nice. So still that Reaver alive being very, very annoying over here. Yeah, I mean, not not bad considering. Considering he had a Wraith that was very close to where the shuttles were flying in. He had a second turret making. Does a good job. This uh, dropship's still over here. Looks like he wants to do something, but there's nothing to do. Maybe you just drop out the vultures and have them scout the left part of the map. Something like that. Motive now. Let's count. It's got one, two, three, fourth base and fifth base on the way. And of course, the fifth base is always this kind of important moment where Terran needs to make a choice. Now, unfortunately for speed, he's gotten pretty far behind from the harassment of motive. Uh, even though that DT drop was pretty ineffective and speed's opener looked very good. You know, the, uh, the drop that came in with the one DT and Reaver did really well. And then that drop that we just saw did pretty well. He's on 42 workers, just now starting to rise above that again. This is like sub two base economy, and he's on three base, and he's playing against a 76 probe user that's going to five base. So what I see and I don't see here, what I see is motive in a dominating position, and what I don't see is an attack opportunity for speed. So I think speed's decision is already made for him that... I believe he just has to make another command center. And the problem with that, it, it's not a good choice, right? Like if he wants to try something else, I absolutely understand because it's a tough position. He's actually killing a lot of probes. This is kind of a cool move. Although the probe count is still completely fine. You can play mid sixties. Uh, but anyways, if he makes another command center, the game slows dramatically. And it's like a maxed motive almost right now against like 110 supply. So, if he makes one, it's like Motive can make two more Nexuses. He could put down Stargate and go Arbiter or maybe even start Air Attack and a Stargate to 
have a potential carrier switch later on. And he's just going to get a huge bank, right? He's going to be maxed out. And we're going to see, like, by the time Motive can do anything, 3, 4k bank, perhaps. Or maybe he comes in, tries to bust. And it looks like that is what he's going to do. Speeds, uh, shuttle's full of zealots. Storm's coming out over here. It's a good spread from Speed. Speed's going to hold this attack. But the attack is still pretty effective. Ooh, that's an excellent storm up on the high ground there. Excellent, excellent storm. Another one's going to hit, too. Yeah, pops two tanks with that one. So, yeah, he ends up holding technically. But motive... Yeah, Motive has done what he set out to do. The worker count is still, like, mid-40s, right? So, like, really crappy economy. The army is even smaller than before, right? We're 20, 30 supply below what speed was at before. So, like, still no attack. He's getting 3, 2. That's the only positive thing here for speed. And now you can see Motive is just like, yeah, let's make some nexuses. There's no way he can be attacked. He's got... The world is his oyster. You can add some more gates. I feel like it's smart to either start plus one or maybe even start a Stargate, even if you're not going to use it. I think just the price, the amount of pressure that puts on Terran, and Terran has to just continually scan looking for those tech switches as well. I feel like something like that could be a nice add. Not that he needs to do it. This looks like something that Motive should be able to very straightforwardly, um, you know, come right back into this game, basically. Uh, well, not right back, but finish this game very cleanly is what I mean to say. Catches that dropship. Speed is really trying to put together some harassment. His unit count is so low. Is he going to try to expand down here? Yeah, when you get into a position this bad, a lot of times the only chance you might have would be like barely splitting the map, doing something like saying, okay, screw this base because he'll never expand here. But maybe you can set up here and take this. And then maybe you can inch to here and take these two. And maybe your opponent just keeps making gateway units and attacking instead of going stargates. Right? If all those things line up, you know, your percentage chance of winning is low. But it's bigger than expand here and max out. It's bigger than trying to attack right now. Right? Like, you have to... Tr if you're going to stay in a game like this, you want to try to give yourself the best possible opportunity... And there's all sorts of paths that are 0% win here, <laughs> right? Whereas this path, I, I'm like, yeah, maybe 2% maybe of the time a player of Motive's caliber just decides to go ape mode and refuses to tech switch and, and suicides enough armies that maybe you can come back. Not likely, obviously. Not likely. So he starts to come in. See, he's being careful about it, too. He's clearing turrets. He's clearing mines. You can tell that Motive's very serious about his practice right now. Starts diving in with that exact same shuttle layout that we had before. Excellent size storms. Dude, SCVs dropping down. Oh my god, just nothingness. This setup defensively is so strong here, but uh, just not even close to enough. And I think we might just see GG. Looks like a counterattack coming in. But there's just, there's no way. There's too many size storms. Too many gateways. Gateway's going up over here as well. Northern Nexus getting ready. Maybe if there was zero size storm or something like that. GG is called. Uh, you know, that was that was a fun game. Like, Motive definitely took control of it. I liked how Speed tried to be greed. Um, you know, that, that third base on location. The quick armory builds are very tough to pull off right now. Even Flash is not even touching those with a 10-foot pull at the moment. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed uh, this game. Thank you very much for all the support. Make sure you subscribe, and uh, thanks for watching.